Major General Thornton, New Zealand Chief of Staff, receives a Maori welcome when he arrives at Terendak Camp, Malaya. While in Malaya, the New Zealand Battalion has adopted many Maori customs for their ceremonial parades, and Maori concert parties have been in demand at Malayan functions. Four Maori warriors escort General Thornton to the saluting dais. He is here to take the salute for the farewell parade before the battalion returns to New Zealand. During its two-year stay, the battalion has added to the fund of goodwill enjoyed by Kiwi troops in Malaya, as well as carrying out routine garrison duties and anti-terrorist patrols on the Thailand-Malayan border. Thirty-two teenage finalists from all over New Zealand go through the hoops and loops at the Hastings showgrounds for the national JC Driving Rodeo. A rodeo is usually an exhibition of exceptional feats of skill and daring. These young people are practicing skills every driver in New Zealand should have. The event goes off without a bang and very successfully. There's nothing daring about the gentle art of parking. Knowledge of the road code is tested. Its appetite whetted, the public can also have a go. If you break the road code, you'll get nothing but help from the traffic officer doing it on a small scale on this machine. Driving in a perfectly straight line is more difficult than it looks. So is stopping and starting on an incline when, oops, points are deducted for backsliding. Anyone can put his leaden foot on the accelerator, but applying the brakes with precision is apparently a rare skill. Lack of it loses lives on the highway. Here it's only a few points. The points are totted up and the winners announced by Mr. Neil Hathaway, Vice President of National JCs. Prizes are presented by Miss Hastings, Anne Hughes, to the winner John Collett, two cups and a stereogram, and transistor radios to the place getters. Teenage drivers with their senses souped up and not their cars. Entering its 101st year is Omaru, main centre of North Otago. Situated halfway between the equator and the pole, Omaru today is a quiet agricultural town. Unlike other pioneer towns, its buildings like this house were lasting constructions made from the local Omaru stone. In high contrast to today, 19th century Omaru was wild and wicked, with the two breweries and many hotels doing a good trade. But came 1906, and with it, prohibition. Bars closed, hotels were abandoned. And it was not for over 50 years that liquor again flowed in Omaru, lawfully. Serving a large farming district, Omaru has two important industries. Not far from the town, immense natural deposits of lime have been excavated for many years. The lime from this huge man-made plateau is hauled to the works below for processing for agriculture and industry. A new plant is being built to employ a method for treating lime that has just been developed. It will probably revolutionize lime production. From the same white hills comes the Omaru stone, a hard limestone which has for years been a popular building material. Cut from the hill in large blocks, it's later sawn up into more manageable sizes. Its attractive texture makes it a very useful building stone.
An important feature of Amaru's history is the development of the Corradale strain of sheep, which was begun here 95 years ago. Today, at the North Otago Centennial A&P show, they are judged alongside the other breeds. A remarkable animal, the Corradale was developed by an early settler, James Little. The result of his experiments was so successful that today's Corradales are one of the world's great breeds. This year's show brings a record number of entries, more than a thousand above last year's. Aristocrats in breeding, it's on these animals that the future quality of stock depends. You can afford to sneer if you're a prize porker. With a proud popper peering, piglets parade for the people. In the main ring, focus is on the gambler's stakes as high fi goes for a high fly and misses. No mean horse, however, he takes third place below Cassidy, a clean jumper mastering the hurdles with style. Quite a different horse is the noble Clydesdale, now seldom seen. Dog trials, a demonstration in coordination and canine cunning. And usually the man and dog team trials. Great are the pieces of farm machinery exhibited. Some of these machines will do all sorts of things. And tractors still hold their appeal for big boys and little boys. So do other people's pet lambs, if nobody's looking. And as usual, the sideshows are doing good business. events completed, it's on with the Grand Parade. This show is the last event in Omaru's centennial year. A float honouring the Corradale sheep opens a cavalcade of farming progress. It's a reminder that Omaru's history and economy is based on the land. As in their heyday, the Clydesdales show their form. A feature is the antique farm machinery, resurrected for the parade. By night time, ring events are over, but the sideshows are still doing good business. Glittering lights and tinsel glamour of Pleasure Alley, a small boy can lose himself for a few hours. And perhaps the showman might make a few shillings. It's been a highly successful show, one fitting to the centenary of a prosperous farming district.